She said, which legislator in New York is most flexible? To, to approach at this point, so that maybe we could get one to uh, Well, we're trying to set up a meeting with the Senate Majority Leader uh, to start. Um, and we've had a couple of our AFP activists up in the, the Buffalo, Albany area asking people, but there's a lot of like, yeah, well, we'll look at it, you know. So, Scarlett, Scarlett. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, a couple questions. One, is it also part of this, I'll call it a scam, that they uh, limit the amount of permits that are in the marketplace? Well, that's how they would, so there's, gonna, there's only a limited number of permits that are auctioned. Right. And the idea is that, you know, they, they, see, here's where it gets really dangerous. The very bureaucrat to one run this can control supply by limiting the number of permits they sell. So as they, I mean, this is really deep is because it starts out on your electricity bill so little, two dollars a permit, but as they slowly push the prices up, they can totally manipulate the market. The specialists make enormous profits and you pay enormous rates. That's exactly how it works. And just one other point. There's two technologies that don't contribute to greenhouse gas. One nuclear, which since 1978 was the last permit issued for a nuclear power plant. And another newer technology is uh, natural gas fuel cells, where they take natural gas, which the Northeast has an abundance of, and they strip off the natural gas to direct the hydrogen from there, and they use that in a fuel cell. And the only output from that is water and uh, heat, and you get electricity from it. The, you know, there's another danger, which has been pointed out, I should have gotten into, is that while this is a lot of money, you know, these trade, like a, a foreign government, Saudi Arabians, the Chinese, are, can trade in this market. They can come in and buy up all the permits. They can just buy them up and drive the cost up so high that it packs our economy and we drive jobs out of here. They could then turn and dump them, they could totally manipulate the marketplace, which is a very dangerous place to say for us. Can you get a, can't they possibly come in also and buy a majority of them and then not even uh, yeah. look to use them? So they, they could hold them and drive up the course of electricity. You could water. also have no, no energy uh, or yeah. very little of it at certain times, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> now, the other thing is I should have pointed out that when this was set up, the money is supposed to go into what the states call a global warming solutions fund. And the environmentalists got behind this because they said all this money is going to go to green projects, whatever that is. Uh, David Patterson took his hundred million, which is what they raised, hundred million, and used it in the budget. It did not go to any green project. And the New Jersey Christie took sixty-five million. All this is is a new tax. The environmentalists were duped, as well as the way of money. They were duped, and they know they were duped. Um, it's not going to anything but a new tax. That's all this is. A question up here. Obviously, you have a very educated audience, but I felt in your talk. I couldn't assimilate all you had to say. There's no pause that we could have asked a question. I don't understand anything about cap and trade. And sometimes when you talk a long time, it doesn't give us the time to ask a question in between. Uh, well, you have, we have a website you can go to that to all this stuff. Yeah, well, we, we, we also have a talking point, so. Right. You know, it's my opinion. Um, in the last uh, bullet point you have here on paper, it says, um, EG is not expected to have any effect on reducing carbon emissions until the year 2030. It seems to me like uh, there's no initiative at all to reduce carbon emissions. It's quite the antithesis because of this cap and trade. This is a commodity. There's no reason to drop carbon emissions because then there's no there's no money. So it seems like that would be a point to act on this. Is, this isn't going to be a carbon Yeah. Well, based on their logic, we have, we have to pay the green. So. Question in the back? Um, a point, a question, a remark. Uh, Dick Morris, in a recent column, pointed out that the United States cumulatively is now at 5.5 billion cubic tons of carbon emissions, and that was 2009, we're probably going to be at 5 billion, which was the 
poinsettia in one of those um, environmental meetings that we had to be at. But this is happening because we are getting rid of coal-fired electrical generating plants and replacing them. Not quickly enough and more, but China's doing just the opposite. Nobody's going to try and put cap and trade in China. When I heard Steve speak in New Jersey, I made a point that I want to reiterate again because I don't want it to get lost. This is not just a fiscal problem. It's not just a legal problem. It is a moral issue where the government can secretly connive to steal money from the populace for something the populace does not approve. This is a moral issue as well as a fiscal issue. And keep that in mind, please. It's not a small point. The other thing is I happen to be a member of the Ramapo Republican Committee, and the, next, the last meeting we had was a few days after Steve had spoken <coughs> and mentioned RGGI, and I asked, how many of the committee members are familiar with IGGI? Zero hands went up. So I have been tasked to present a paper to the committee and hopefully from there work to other Republican committees in Rockland and maybe throughout the state and at least wake them up a little bit and maybe get some of the uh, Republican legislators on board. A question in the back. It's not a question, it's a comment, but uh, I flipped on to the Communist Party USA months ago, and it said the red has gone green. And that was their front page of their site. The red has gone green. I showed it to my husband, I copied and pasted it. It is so, you know, there's a real underpinning of a lot of this green movement, of course. You know, we know. And the ultimate goal of cap and trade is to redistribute wealth and income to the rest of the world. Income redistribution, forcing jobs and income to other countries. And you know, the globalists think very much in those regards. Question about? Just want to ask, what's your opinion as to the um, adamancy of uh, Republicans who have the support of Tea Party people? Many of them are uh, purportedly uh, for the Tea Party, and yet not one person seems to want to get on board. And not one. There must be something very deep that's pressuring them not to get involved with this. It's not just yeah, well, they're afraid they're liberal. Liberal. They're afraid the liberal left, and they'll come and tell you one thing. And uh, I'm seeing it all the time. I, it's really amusing. You think that the Republican leadership? Is, is somehow worth of working together? This was, look, this was, what? Leadership. This was passed with was Republican it? votes. It was passed in every state. With, it was masterminded by Republicans to a great extent. It took as much to expose the fraud to Republicans as to Democrats. You need to get a repeal bill in New York, guys. You need to fight. I don't know who your state legislators are, um, but you need to go and tell me you want them to, to, uh, to sponsor this bill. And when they come to your meetings and they stand up here and tell you they're with you, they're lying if they're not going to do that. But I'm seeing this all across the country at Tea Party events. So we're Republican, you know, elected officials are showing up that they're giving lip service without real action. How is Chris Christie, how does he defend this? Uh, he needs the money for the budget, which goes back and tells you it's a new tax. And I, I'm sorry, I don't buy that. You know, a heavy duty, well, I need the money for the budget. Well, cut your budget. Let's learn to cut spending the way we should be doing. Before it's too late. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for having me.